Okay, welcome to back to Empire of the Sun. And last time we met, uh, the Japanese player, me, just played this card for the ops, not for the event. And so we are using the two in the upper left hand corner as uh, our operations for ops value. So that's two activations plus three because I used it against the uh, uh, combined three HQ. Uh, which, oh, sorry, down, down here, excuse me. So that's five activations. Activated five units and did an attack here in Valley Pattern. And um, remember, the limitations of using a card for an ops, for its ops values, if you only have one battle hex. So in this case, we did a one battle hex here in Valley Pattern. Okay, so if you look here real quick. He says no reaction possible and it's an auto kill. Why no reaction possible? Well, he didn't roll, bother rolling for intelligence. He could have, in which he would have had to roll at least a four or less because it's not. I didn't enter uh, an allied uh, air zoid. But he said that it doesn't. He's not going to bother just because he won't be able to react anyway because his headquarters are all cut off. This is cut off. That's cut off because of the um, of the. Uh, Air ZOI, um, air, Japanese air supremacy here, here, and here. It's in for Manila and July Chap. So he can't really activate anything in that part of the world. The only thing he can really activate is through the Sync Pack headquarters here in Pearl Harbor. Yeah. He has a headquarters here, which is a honking range 25. So that's enough to activate, say, BX, this half cruiser, this damaged cruiser, USH cruiser in BX. Activate it to interfere with, say, this. Okay, but unfortunately, it's so this is uh, pretty well escorted with the Ryujo 683 that uh, really is no, there's no point to it. He would just be destroyed. Okay, so that's that. And then what happened is, is that he said it's, a, it's an auto kill. Okay, well, why is it an auto kill? It's an auto kill. So let's just look at the. Um, let me get rid of this first. Let's look at the um, the force involved. All right. So first of all, you've got the carrier Ryujo. You've got the uh, ha Japanese half army, which is nine, and the Dutch regiment, which is the one six. All right. So if you look really quick, okay, let's 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 let's, let's bring that up. Uh, let's bring it there. Let's bring all our guys up here. Okay. The chart the combat results tables up here. Okay. Now, the only results table we care about right now is the ground combat results. There's no naval combat. Okay, I can't, um, there's no naval combat simply because even if I bomb this, even if I bomb the uh, Dutch regiment, it's a one step unit. And the rules say is if you do air naval combat against hex containing only land units, then you cannot remove the last step. You can't remove the last step. It's only this. So this is the one last step. We only have one step, so it doesn't have it doesn't have that. So it can't be bombed into our existence. All right. So what happens is I have this. So it's just an auto kill. Why is it an auto kill? Well, all right. Let's look at the ground combat results table. Um, if you look at the die roll modifiers, I am the offensive player uh, because I was the one on the attack. Uh, I get a plus two, I have naval units in the battle X, that's this guy. And I also have the only guy with an active air unit in the battle X, just this guy again. So then it automatically gives me a plus four. Yeah? And then he's a minus one because he's in a jungle X. Okay, I'll show you the jungle X later. But he's um, in uh, defending in a jungle X, so he's a minus one. Plus two, plus two, four, minus one is three. So the worst I can do here is if I roll a zero, is I get a three because of the plus three. I can't, I can't do worse than getting a three. That's a full result, one, that's a full result. That means my nine factor is enough to kill his six. Okay, so he dies, okay? So he dies and um, what happens now is that when he dies, um, he can't fire back. He, when he fires back, the worst or the best he can do is get a two result. So times two, he, get, he puts two hits on me, but then I have a damage factor of 12, so he can't even touch me, doesn't even come close to touching me. Uh, then you might say, well, what about the critical hit that we talked about earlier, where you can hurt somebody even though you don't um, uh, you don't have enough strength to hit him? Well, that only uh, occurs for air naval combat results table. Critical hits are only for air naval combat, not for ground, not for ground battle. 
so it doesn't matter. So, okay. So, all right. So let's bring this all back to whence it came. So all the way to battle happened. All the way back to Bally Tappan. Okay, that's there. So let's just uh, proceed with the what he did here. He uh, okay. So he removed the Dutch regiment, and then of course these guys. Comes in there, so we occupy Bally Tappan, and then he goes ahead and I think he puts a. Uh, okay, he incremented my Japanese resources to five. And then he puts a uh, naval unit mark, uh, naval marker, control markers at Macassar, and Valley Papen, and Batavia. Okay, and he increments his passes, that was his previous pass. And finally, he passes again. Okay, he passes again. And this time, he has, so he has no more passes. He's decided to pass again. He has no more passes. So now I go again because he decided to pass his. His turn. Why is he passing, by the way? Again, he's passing because he has five cards. I have seven. He's got two passes. So he's trying to balance the card count. He's making sure that um, there will not come a time where I will have, you know, he'll have the last move. He'll have the last card, as it were. He can't be like, I play a card, then I play another card, then I play another card, because he doesn't have any cards left. So he doesn't want to do that. So that's why he's passing. And that's a good idea. All right, so what did I do now? It's my turn again. So this time I decided to play this card, the Battle of Midway card. And the Battle of Midway card is a very powerful card. If you look at it really quick, you realize that it activates any HQ. That means it can activate any uh, headquarters units that I want. And it has a rather large logistic value, which is eight. So that's like incredible. But it's got a big catch. The big catch is, is that all battles must be fought on one hex islands. Okay, so you can't use this card to go after, say, the Philippines or go after New Guinea or something. You've got to go after one hex island. So this is a really a card that's meant to go after these little islands in the in the in, in the south in the central Pacific. So all right, so I decided, okay, well I can work with that. So I activated against the um, I activated the uh, South Seas HQ. Okay, so that gives me ten activations, so eight plus two, so I can activate ten units. All within range of South Sea HQ, which is 12. So within 12 hexes, I can only activate this in 12 hexes. Within 12 hexes. So I activated this fellow for one. I activated this fellow for two. These two guys, three, four. And I activated all these guys up here, except for this air unit. I put him aside. I don't want him. But I activated all this. That's six units I've activated here. So six plus four is 10. So I activate 10 units. Okay, so what I did was, okay, I, I moved this guy, so I moved, let's see, I did, what I did was I moved this fellow and did a amphibious invasion. I remember I have seven of those, so I've already used two, I think, so I have five left. Moved this guy, 15 hexes, and that's 14 I moved in here. That's 14 hexes. Then I moved my heavy carriers, this, all this stuff, all these guys, one, two, three, and four. So this carrier force moved this way. We did not attack midway. We could have, but we didn't. I went and after, went after Wake, okay? So why am I here? Wake's over there. So what I'm doing is I'm attacking at range. So it's a three range. I have a range of three, one, two, three. I'm not sitting on... The island itself, what I'm doing is I'm taking this overwhelming force and trying to destroy this one puny little air unit on Wake Island. And you might say, well, why am I doing that? Why am I using so much force against this puny air unit? Well, you'll see in the, um, at the end of the turn, you'll see why I did that. It's a very good reason, or I think it's a very good reason to do that. All right, so another move is I moved this guy from Guam, did another invasion, and this time he did a landing here at Hollandia. Okay, he made a move to Hollandia. Okay, so he did that. He occupied Hollandia. That's mine now. And then finally, I made this guy, these two guys, I moved over here to Guadalcanal to attack Guadalcanal. And then I moved this guy and attacked Biak. 
Okay. So what are the battle factions here? Battle factions are here. Okay. And I'm going to say these are the guys who are participating in that battle. So, whoops, what happened here? Okay. I want to clone this. So, that's one battle hex. This is another battle hex. And this is another battle hex. Right here. Okay. So, notice these are all in one hex islands. Royal Canal is a one hex island. See, that's a one hex island. Biak is a one hex island. Well, this is the island for Biak. The port and the air base are there. So it's one hex island. Okay. And finally, Wake is a one hex island. Okay. I think I have to show that to you, but I'll show it again anyway. Wake is a one hex island. That's supposed to be an atoll that has a one hex island. All right, so we were able to get around our, we were able to fulfill the requirements of the uh, card that allows us to to have uh, battles, all our battles on one hex islands. Okay, here, by the way, you might say, well, what about this one? This is not a one hex island. Yes, but that's not a battle hex. It's not a battle hex uh, because there are no enemy units there, and there is no danger of uh, this becoming a, a, a special reaction battle hex that happened in Batavia earlier in the flux. Because there are no allied Azois there, no allied air units, or no zones of influence that would come and uh, try to uh, interfere and make that into a battle hex. So that's, those are our moves. Okay, so we created three battle hexes. Those are all our moves. So the question is, how is our good friend going to react to that? Our enemies, um, our opponent, how will he react to that? So that's the question. Oh, by the way, all this time I've had five videos into this um, into this series, and I still have not talked about how do we win the game. What's the what's the aim here? I'll talk about the Allied uh, victory conditions later, but let me talk about the Japanese uh, victory conditions. How, what do the Japanese have to do to win? Just as the Japanese player, or I'm the Japanese player. So what do I have to do to win this game? To win this game, um, it precludes um, precludes the possibility, or the designer Mark Herman decided that really. An actual Japanese conquest of the United States was never really going to happen. That was never really an option or uh, something that was going to happen. So what happens, we, he said that um, Japanese victory in the war would be if it could bring the Americans to the negotiating table, basically saying to the uh, Japanese, yes, we recognize all your conquests, yes, uh, let's, let's put an end to this war by treaty negotiations, all right? And that's done by this thing called the political will, the US political will. This political will right now is a plus eight, as you can see right there. And the Japanese objective is for me, is for them to bring the Jap US political will all the way down to zero. As soon as this thing gets zero, that's it, game over, wins for the Japanese. Okay. How do we bring down US political will? There's a couple of ways of doing that. You can conquer countries, uh, as you conquer countries. Um, your yeah, political will goes down. If I capture the Philippines, conquer the Philippines, that's minus one. Uh, Philippines, Malaya, Dutch East Indies, and Burma, the minor countries, uh, that's one political will each as they die, as they as they're conquered. So you can knock off four political will there, it goes to plus four. Um, there are cards that also pull down political will. For example, the Tojo Resigns card pulls it down another plus two. The Tokyo Rose card pulls it down by plus by another one, and there is something called uh, and you can con you can also pull down political will by two by conquering the big countries India, China, and Australia, and that's you know that's another thing we're going to talk about later on as that becomes uh, pertinent. Okay, so that's three ways of doing it: uh, conquering countries, the the minor countries are each one, Burma, Malaya, Philippines, Dutch East Indies is worth one. China, India, Australia, two each. Okay, then there are cards that pull down political will. Okay, and also the destruction of the U.S. fleet. The U.S. fleet, when it's destroyed, that means if you destroy all the carriers, that's a political will hit. And finally, at the end, uh, later on after turn four, the U.S. has to do something called progress of the war. See this little thing here called progress of the war. He has to make um, a certain number of he has to conquer back. 
certain a certain number of Japanese hexes per turn, otherwise he loses the political will. That's called progress of the war. If the U.S. public realizes um, not happy with the war the way the war is going, um, it's too slow, blah blah blah, um, they're going to say, "Oh, this is you know, we don't want you know their, their political will starts to go down." Okay, things like that. All right, so that's how the Japanese will win. They're bringing this political will all the way down. The Allies have obviously have a different set of, 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 of victory conditions, and we'll talk about that when the time comes. Oh, another way the Japanese will win, I'm so sorry, another way the Japanese win is if they, if they outlast the Allies. If they basically go all the way up until turn 12, which is May to August 1945, and they still haven't surrendered. If the Japanese can hold out, um, uh, and they haven't surrendered by August of 1945, and they also win the game. Um, the surrender of Japan is obviously the main allied victory condition. There are several ways of doing that, but we'll talk about that when time, when, um, when time comes. Okay. Oh, by the way, these guys are all over the video. Okay. Oh, and I'm so sorry, I forgot. This guy here uh, moves to Bangkok. Uh, this guy moves to Bangkok because he is I'm doing a ground, a future ground transport that I did earlier. Remember this guy with the Korean army from Seoul to Batavia. This time I'm going from Tokyo all the way to Bangkok. Okay, so he's there. Okay, so he's there and he's going to hopefully reinforce or help me later on once at some point in the future turn with an offensive towards Burma. Okay, so hopefully that's going to happen in the next turn. Okay, so now we're going to wait for our opponent's reaction, see what happens with these three battles. And thank you for your attention. I'll talk to you guys later.